This building system works kind of okay, but the player is not getting a lot of feedback from it. He doesn't know what he's trying to place or where he's trying to place it. So let's fix that. If you miss the first part of this tutorial series, you can watch it somewhere here. And we will begin right in the building manager script in the place object void. We are already calling the void to visualize the object, but we are not sure if the object that we want to visualize was already instantiated. So we will need to create reference for the type of object that we are visualizing and transform reference for the actual object. So we have these two variables and down here I'm checking if either the visualized object is equal to now, which means that we haven't instantiated it yet, or the visualized object type is not equal to the object that we actually want to visualize. So either when there is no object or when we are just switching between them, we also want to start the visualization. And now we can get to starting the visualization of the object. I'm just setting the visualized object type to the object that we are trying to visualize to make sure that we are not running the same void again and if there already is some visualized object I can just destroy it. And we probably don't want the visualized object to look the same as the placed object, we either want it to look kind of red or green, so I will create new material for that. So we have the material. I set the rendering mode to transparent and the transparency to about half. So now we can make it either green or red. And I will make sure that this material is assigned to all of the materials of the mesh of the visualized object. But before that, we we'll obviously need to also instantiate the object. So first we are setting the visualized object and we are instantiating it based on the object that we want to visualize. Then I'm just setting its local scale based on the size of the grid. Then I'm getting the mesh renderer component in children. So it will depend on the structure of your objects. So make sure that it is in the children of the visualized object. Then I'm creating new materials array. Before I was trying to just set the material to the already created materials array, but this doesn't work. So you have to create new one with the same size as the materials array that already was in the mesh renderer. Then I'm going through all of the materials of the materials array. I'm assigning the transparent material to them, for which I have also created variable up here. And then I'm just assigning the whole materials array to the mesh renderer. So now we have instantiated the object that we are trying to visualize and we have successfully set its materials to the transparent color. So I will go back to the visualize object function where I will just change its position. So just set position of the visualized object and I am also setting the rotation. Back in Unity, don't forget to set your transparent material and we can try it and see if it works. So now when I drag these objects to my hotbar, I should start to see, yep, I can see just the silhouette of the wall that is green for now, which just means that I can place it even though we haven't added any logic for that yet. So when I change it, we can see that I'm still seeing the wall because we have done nothing to the void to end visualizing it. But when I take, for example, the floor, yep, we can see that it is visualizing the floor where it should be. Some stuff is not really working correctly, but we will work on that. And I can obviously still place the objects the same way as before, and I can obviously still place them into each other. First thing I will fix is the ending visualization of the object, so I will just destroy it. And this is that simple. In the player script, we are already calling the end visualization object function, so it should work just like that but we also want to be calling it when the raycast is not detecting anything. So just add it here. So right now it is showing the wall, when I select empty slot it is not showing anything, and when I select the floor it is also working. Right now we have colliders on this visualized object, which we also not want. So in the visualize object function I will just go through all of the colliders of the children object and just set them to trigger. Just like that, 
I'm getting the colliders array, so get components in children, and then I'm just setting them to trigger. Yep, that looks a lot better. Another thing I will fix is that when I kind of look into the wall, it starts flickering at some time, just like here. So I will just put it to the non-raycast layer so that the raycast is not hitting it. I'm doing this in the start visualizing object function because we need to do it just once. So I'm setting the layer of the visualized object and also of all of its children. The layer is on the index 2 and it is already made by Unity, so we don't need to be setting anything. Yep, and now the flickering is gone. Next thing that we'll fix is that we'll actually check if there are any collisions of the object that we are trying to place, so that we can just decide if the place is obstructed or not. We'll do this in the visualize object function, where we already have added boolean if the place is occupied. So I will go through all of the colliders of the children of the visualized object, and I will just do many raycasts. I have added this to the part where we are going through all of the colliders of the children of the visualized object. So I am creating new raycast hit array of all of the hits and this is just physics.boxcastall. We want to cast it at the center of the collider and the bounce just has to be half of this size of the bounce of the collider because the bounce are twice as big and then I'm just casting it up using the quaternion.identity which is pretty much just empty quaternion with the distance of 1 on the build player which I have just added into variables just like so. Then I'm going through all of the hits from the raycast hit and if the hit that collider is not equal to null which means that we are colliding with some object on the build layer, then we can just set that the place is occupied and break from these two loops. If the cell is occupied, then there is pretty much no need to go through the four loops again, so I am breaking the first one, and I haven't found better way to break just these two for loops at the same time, so I have created boolean if I want to break both of them, and I am just setting this one to true if the place is occupied and if we want to break both of them I just break also the second one. Then I am also setting the color so if the place is occupied then it is red color and if it is not occupied it is green color and I am assigning the color to the material that is later set to the object that we are visualizing. And because we are doing the raycast in the build layer, I will also need to go to the build function and set the layer of the object and also of its children to the build layer. So in the build object function, I'm first getting the layer index, for which I haven't found a better way than using a logarithm. So we are doing a logarithm of the build layer with the base of 2. And then I'm just going through all of the children of the new object that we have instantiated and I'm setting their layers to the layer that we want. And I'm also setting the layer of the just the object itself. And in Unity don't forget to create new layer and assign it to the script. So let's try it. When I can place it, it is green, that's correct. And when I place it, the layer should be on the build layer. So we are not really able to place it to the same position, which works correct, but I can still place it to some other positions. You can also try it with the floor. Now here might be, well, it is actually working. In my case, it was not working when I tried to place it between these walls because the colliders were still detecting the floor. But right now we can see it, we can place it. We can't really place it into itself again. And I can also make some floor in here. And I think it looks really nice. Yep, right now we can see that I can't place the wall because there is floor above it. So that's something that we'll also need to fix. You could definitely fix this problem just by tweaking the raycast, but I like to have more control over it. So what I will do is for each of the buildable item scriptable objects, I will have a list that it will ignore when doing the raycast. Because when you have, let's say, hundreds of objects, there is a chance that on many of them the colliders will just not be working. 
So I had a problem when I had some stairs, I was not able to place them between these walls, because obviously the colliders were just detecting the walls also. In the item scriptable object class, I have added list of all of the item scriptable objects that we want to ignore while doing the raycast. Then, when we are placing the object, we'll need to know which objects are obstructing the cell on which we are trying to place it. And so we can easily know which object is wall, floor and so on. I will create new script, build object, which will be on each of the built objects and it will be just containing the item scriptable object of the object. Just like this, we have new class that is containing the type of the object. Now I will go back to the building manager and when building the object, I will just add the component to it. I am just adding the build object component to the object that we have just built and setting the correct object type. Now we'll go back to the part where we are doing the raycasts, which is here, and we'll not only be checking if the collider is equal to null, but we also want to check if the list of the object that we are trying to build, of all of the ignored objects, is containing the object which is being obstructed on the cell. So it should look just like that. First, I'm just checking if the object that we have hit is containing the build object script. And then I'm checking if the ignored objects lists on the object that we are trying to place is not containing the object that is obstructing. And now back in Unity, with all of the item scriptable objects, such as the stairs, you can ignore some objects when placing. So for now, I said that the wall is ignoring the stairs and floor, and the stairs is ignoring the wall and floor, and so on. You can just set it to really anything you want. So now, even when I try to place the wall under the roof, you can see that it is still allowing me to do it, because it is ignoring all of the other objects. The same way I can still place the stair and it is ignoring the walls and so on. Now there is one more graphical problem which is when I'm for example trying to place the floor into a floor. It is really flickering badly so I will go back to the visualize object function where I will just move the visualized object just by a bit in the direction that the player is looking at it. First, I'm calculating the direction just by subtracting the position of the player from the position and normalizing it. And then I'm just adding this to the position where I want to have it. So direction times minus 0.01f. And this should just always move the visualized object closer to player so that he can see better without the flickering. The difference in the positioning is really not noticeable for us, but you can see the flickering is gone. And like this, we can build some simple houses with this really intuitive system. One more thing that is still missing is that even when I build some item, it is still in my inventory, so I will quickly fix that in the inventory manager. In the inventory manager script, I created a new public function, which is going to subtract the health item. So first, I am getting the slot based on the hotbar slots array, Again, this is the same as what we have been doing in the get health item function. I'm also getting the item. I'm just subtracting one from the current stack of the item. And then I'm checking if the current stack is less or equal than zero. If this is true, I'm just setting the health item of the slot to null. I'm destroying the item and I'm calling the hotbar item changed to make sure that everything is updating correctly. Now we will go back to the building manager and in the function build object, I will also add boolean if we are building the object from the player's hand, because in the next part we'll add some saving and loading. And if we are building from the player's hand, I will just subtract the health item. Just like that, really simple. And because we have added one more parameter, we just need to set it when we are building the object. So this time it will be true, because we are building from the player's hand. And now you can see it as I am placing the floors, the items are getting subtracted from my hand, and it all seems to be working correctly. So with this intuitive system I can build pretty much anything, it will be working even better as you add more objects that the player can place. 
And this obviously still works with the crafting system. So we can add some items to our inventory, add recipes for these objects that you can build, and you can just craft them. And who knows, maybe later we'll also add some mining system so that we'll be able to mine these resources, then craft these objects from them and build our own base. In the next part of this series, we'll take a look at how we can add some basic hammer, with which we'll be also able to destroy these objects. And we'll also make saving and loading of these buildings. I hope that this tutorial was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt Tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.